Discord has a brand new suite of features where you can clip things from live streams in Discord, edit them around and things like that. How do you do it? What is it? And how do we use it? Well, I'll answer all of those here. First of all, this isn't going to be enabled for absolutely everyone. Instead, it'll be rolled out slowly to users and servers as time goes on. If I head across to a Discord server and join a voice channel, then start streaming something, say maybe Discord, you'll see this section at the bottom here. Clips settings, enable clipping, capture clips during your stream with Alt-C, and this will be enabled. You may also see a pop-up over in this section here somewhere that looks something like this. Clips have arrived, take clips right in Discord, and share them with friends early access now available with Nitro. So when you're live streaming, all you need to do is hit Alt and C in order to create a clip and you'll see this icon over here, which you can also click as well to save a clip. Now, how exactly do we use it and what does it do? Well, I've hit this button and all I heard was a noise. What does this mean and how does it work? Well, I hit it. So where exactly did it go and what did it do? If I head across to my user settings down here and click the user settings button, then head across to clips, you'll see a new section here. We can set a clip length and choose a certain amount of time here, 30 seconds, one minute and two minutes, then a clipping keybind, which we can press to save the last 30 seconds, minute or two minutes, set a save location for the video clips, and finally enable hardware acceleration if you'd like to use NVENC or AMD's equivalent, etc. If I head across to my documents folder here, you should see a video file with the title of the program you are streaming, as well as some extra numbers after it. If I open it up, you'll see that over here, I have OBS Studio and me speaking as well as obviously everyone else speaking in Discord, etc. It's saved currently at properties details 1490 by 748, which is definitely not the 1080p or whatever I'm streaming in. In fact, it saves with the windows width and height of whatever you're streaming, etc. So the video is cropped and that's already pretty useful compared to using something like NVIDIA Shadowplay, OBS, etc, etc. It's cropped to the size of whatever program you're streaming. That being said, what else can we do with it? Well, this is all that it tells us about it here. If I head into a chat and click the plus button to share a clip, a brand new option here, you'll see a pop-up showing us the videos that we've saved previously. This one is the OBS video I just recorded from my streaming. There's also a settings button on the top right that takes us to the settings page and user profiles, but heading back here, we can search clips for certain application names, times and dates, etc. And also we can sort by most recent or oldest. If I click a clip here or hover over one, you'll see we have an edit option, upload or rather share and delete. If I click edit, you'll see a brand new section where we can not only trim the video by dragging the start and end points. I think there's a limit to how short it can be. Nope, it seems like we can just move the start point. The end point doesn't want to move for me, but anyways, you should be able to shorten it and lengthen it here. You can turn off stream or Audio or participants audio, which is rather useful. If we have a look at the video file, you'll see that playing it, we have click audio track zero all followed by a voice and application. This is very useful, especially if you don't have split audio setup and things like OBS studio, etc. Voice should include your voice and probably other people's voices. Application should only include the applications audio. For example, you're streaming a game, you can grab only the game audio or only the voice audio from you and Discord or all of the tracks all at once. The first track contains both audio from applications or games and your voice as well as Discord, so everything's combined into one. I'll get there in just a moment. So we can manually control these here. It'll include participant information, where it was clipped, etc. We can choose to save changes, export, where we can save it either to our soundboard to save whatever funny noise happened here, or we can download the edited clip and save it somewhere on our PC. You'll get a pop-up asking you where you want to save it. Pretty cool. We can also, of course, finally delete it. If we click share clip here, or we instead head back here or click share over here, it simply pops up in Discord in this section here. If I hit enter to send the message, you'll see that not only the video sends, cropped and things like that, but it also shows clip beta. Hovering over this, clips is an experimental feature and isn't currently available everywhere on Discord. So obviously only certain Discord channels and only certain users have access. Currently, you need Discord Nitro to clip. As for whether it'll be available to everyone or only Discord Nitro users, that's left to be seen. It's a brand new feature. Super cool. We've been through most of everything we need to know about this clip feature on Discord, but what exactly are these split audio tracks? For this, I'll pull up Adobe Audition, which is just my editor of choice. Obviously, this will work with Premiere Pro and probably other video editing 
softwares such as DaVinci, Sony Vegas, etc. Multi-track audio simply means that dragging it in here and double-clicking, you'll see multiple audio tracks. Don't freak out, this is super simple. These top two over here have both combined audio from my voice and the game or application at the very bottom. This means that not only can we delete things said from Discord just by removing it or rather muting it, but we can also remove parts from the game audio, etc, etc. The top audio track combines both the voice and game audio, so that way when you upload it to YouTube, Facebook or anything like that, they only use the first tracks, which in this case are both the audio and the game sound. So if you were to open this in third party software, remove things that you say, etc, it's not necessarily going to work unless you export it mixed down. Anyways, that's getting pretty advanced and for the most part if you're editing audio and video you probably already know about multi-tracks. For the most part this is a really powerful tool that's actually even more powerful by the fact that it splits up your audio automatically. It's even more powerful than for example Shadowplay that only records your voice and the game audio squished down into one and you can't separate them later on. This makes it super powerful and of course likely super useful especially that it crops videos to be the exact size of whatever application you're streaming. You can stream pretty much anything, and anything that you do stream to Discord, you should be able to clip as simple as that. If you'd like more information about this feature, there's probably a call to action learn more somewhere in this notification here, or maybe on the settings page over here in the future, but in the description down below you'll find Prepare for the Flashbang, a link to the Discord support where six days ago they published the clips article talking about exactly what they are, how to enable, use them, minimum system requirements, which you'll see on screen screen here, as well as how to create, edit, share, and delete clips. Obviously, when you delete them, it'll not only be removed from the share a clip section here, but it'll probably also be deleted off your PC as well. Super simple, and of course, pretty obvious. That's really it. It's a powerful feature that's surprisingly more powerful than you would think, just because it's made very conveniently. And finally, before I go, a very quick note, other users will be notified that you're using the clipping feature very simply in Discord with a pop-up that looks something like this. A participant in the call you joined has clipping enabled, your voice may be recorded, as if this this wasn't obvious enough, people can record you and things like that, especially conversations you have on Discord, but this is a nice pop-up to have, and of course maybe covering Discord on legal grounds when it comes to however many parties need to be involved, when it comes to recording, etc. But anyways, that's far outside the scope of this video, as there are tons of different rules for different regions, countries, etc. Anyways, that's really it for this quick video. Hopefully you found this useful. Thank you all for watching. My name is Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!